The second cranial nerve is called the optic nerve. The sensory receptors for this nerve are the rods and cones found in the retina. In this nerve, the first order neurons are bipolar cells, and the second order neurons are ganglion cells. Testing of the optic nerve can be remembered using the mnemonic AFRA. A stands for acuity, F for fields of vision, R for reflexes, and O for ophthalmoscopy. To start with, we test acuity using a Snellen chart and ask the patient to position themselves six metres away. Would you please position yourself six metres away from the chart? If the patient normally wears glasses or contact lenses, you should advise them to keep wearing them whilst looking at the Snellen chart. Now, say to the patient, please cover your left eye and read the lowest line that you can clearly see out loud. N-T-O-L-A-E Thank you. And please cover the other eye. And again, read aloud the lowest line you can clearly see. N-T-O-L-A-E Thank you. This patient can read the line with another 9 written upon it, in both eyes. We would describe this as having vision of 6 over 9. The 6, the numerator, represents the distance from the chart that the patient was positioned. And the number 9, the denominator, re represents the line that they could read. This is the distance that people with normal eyesight can read this line from. Normal vision is 6 over 6. If the patient can't read any of the lines, you get them to stand 3 metres from the chart. Vision would then be described as 3 over something. If they still can't read any lines, you get them to count the number of fingers that you hold in front of their eyes. If they can't do that still, you shine the pen torch in their eyes and see if they can perceive light at all. Near vision can be tested using near vision charts which you hold 30 centimetres in front of the patient's face. When assessing the fields of vision, the first thing to look for is visual inattention. This is when the optic pathways themselves are intact, but the higher cortical functions are unaware that part of the field of vision exists. Can you please point to which hand is slapping? So you can see that the patient is aware of both sides of their visual field. We will now map out the perimeter of their field of vision. To do this, we use a white neuro tip because the peripheral vision is mostly rods, which are monochrome. Can you please cover your right eye? And tell me when you see the white neuro tip enter your field of vision. Now. Keep your hand where it is. So you can see that all four quadrants in both sides are intact. If the patient is unable to communicate, or they are dysphasic because they've had a stroke, you can use what's called visual threat, which crudely assesses their temporal field of vision. I'll now show you how to do this. Starting with your hand out of the patient's field of view, quickly move it forward to the side of their vision. If the patient has good temporal vision, they will blink. You can now look for a central scotoma. Can you see all of my face? Yes, unfortunately. A red neurotip is used for detecting the blind spot because the central field of vision is mostly using cones which detect colour. You need to make sure that you're holding the neurotip halfway between you and the patient because you are comparing your blind spot with theirs to see if they're the same. Can you please cover your right eye? I'd like you to tell me when you can no longer see the red dot and when it reappears. Disappeared. Back. 
మన ఫస్ట్ క్లిక్ So the patient's blind spot was the same size as my own. The pupillary light reflexes in the eye use the optic nerve as the afferent arm and the parasympathetic fibers in the ocular motor nerve as the efferent arm. The two light reflexes we will first look at are the direct and consensual light reflex. In the direct reflex, the pupil that you shine a light into constricts and in the consensual reflex, the pupil on the other side constricts. When doing this, it's important to make sure that the patient takes off any glasses that they're wearing. You will also notice that I put my hand in the middle of the patient's face to stop light escaping from one side to the other. When looking at the pupils, you should first look for any obvious signs of inequality in size. So both pupils look equal. And I look in the same eye, the pupil constricts for the direct reflex, and the other side for the consensual. Direct constriction and consensual constriction. The next light reflex to look at is called the swinging light reflex. To do this, you shine the light in the eye for two seconds and then swing to the other side, two seconds, and then back again and keep going. The sign you're looking for here is paradoxical dilation of the pupil when the light is shone into it. This represents a relative afferent pupillary defect, also known as a Marcus Gunn pupil, which is a sign of optic neuritis in multiple sclerosis. The last component of optic nerve testing was ophthalmoscopy. In an OSCE situation, this will be covered in a separate station, so we won't go through it now. One other thing to look for when testing vision to looking at colour vision, and to do this, you would use Ishihara charts. This concludes testing of the optic nerve.